Hello, everybody. We are getting a little late, but it is time now for Let's Talk College Football, nothing but college football for this November 12th week of 2016. Of course, coming up, we're going to have the good, the bad, and the ugly nationwide for college football, how I did on my picks, and five more picks coming up against the spread. But as always, we begin with that great conference called the Big 12. We'll begin with thumbs up, thumbs down, and of course, thumbs up. Have to give it up to Mason Rudolph of Oklahoma State. Um, he started well, had a stretch through the middle of the game where things didn't go well through a pick six. Um, that means touchdown for the other team, in case you don't know football lingo. But finished strong, led his team from behind. They were down two scores with about half a quarter to go. Oklahoma State remains alive in the Big 12 thick of things with the road win against Kansas State. And Dimitri Flowers of Oklahoma. Remember, there was no Joe Mixon. There was no Samaj P. Ryan. I know it's against Iowa State, but the Sooners desperately needed the running game, and Flowers delivered with over 100 yards rushing and caught a touchdown pass in Oklahoma's win against the Cyclones. And, you know, speaking of the running backs, you know, you can make an argument for who the best running back in college football in terms of the Big 12 is. Okay, just talking about the Big 12. So, Maje P. Ryan, you know, Joe Mixon of Oklahoma. And, of course, you've got, you know, Shockland with a Baylor. I'll tell you one guy that deserves a lot more mention than he's been getting, and that's Deontay Foreman of Texas. Rushed for over 300 yards, granted, against a Texas Tech team that probably couldn't stop you or me running the ball, but still running for over 300 yards is impressive. And Foreman was a big reason why Texas continued their dominance in Lubbock against Texas Tech. Texas is not lost in Lubbock this decade. And we have to say thumbs down, thumbs big time down to Baylor. Not for losing to TCU, although that was a surprise, but for getting hammered, giving up over 60 points to a TCU team that entered the matchup at 500. That's right, TCU's already lost four games this season, and the Horned Frogs come to Waco and put a beat down on the Baylor Bears. Now it's time, everybody, for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Talking about the rest of college football. We're going to keep it short this week. Good, and it's only appropriate that we are bringing you this show on Veterans Day. Because the good, we have to give it up to the Armed Forces schools, okay? I know the Army lost this past week, but cadets, by the way, you know, the Black Knights, they're one went away from bowl eligibility despite the loss to Air Force this past Saturday, Army is still having a terrific season, and they're at five and four. Of course, we know that Navy lately has been good. That's no surprise. The midshipmen are at six and two, and you gotta give it up to the Air Force Academy, who beat Navy earlier this season, and with their win over Army, Air Force wins the Commander in Chief Trophy and is sporting a six and three record. So the Armed Forces schools a combined seventeen and nine, not too shabby. And the bad, the SEC East. This is a horrible division for what is supposed to be the best conference in the land. Its best team is Florida, and they got hammered by Arkansas. They got drove to the ground. 31-10, to and the game wasn't even that close. Florida, by the way, as if their luck wasn't bad enough, even though they lead the division. You know that game they were supposed to play against LSU at home? Well, they got to play LSU. It's been rescheduled for later this month. In Baton Rouge. So there's another potential loss right there. And a non-conference game at the end of the year against Florida State. And, you know, Florida might end up winning the SEC East, but only by default. And they're going to come into that game most likely against Alabama in early December in Atlanta, limping. And the ugly, no doubt, goes to Michigan State. And I feel embarrassed about this selection because it's the worst pick I've ever made in my entire life. I thought Michigan State would be competitive at the very least. And with Mark Antonio, you get terrific defenses and offenses that get the job done. Michigan State hasn't won a ball game since mid-September. They've lost seven in a row, and they have yet to win a Big Ten game. You know you're bad when you lose to Illinois. And that's exactly what happened. Michigan State right now is 0-4 in the Big Ten and 2-7 and and. You know, if they went three in a row at five and seven, they might get a bowl game because, you know, they're both ineligible. But remember, bowls have to have teams, and there's going to be so many bowls out there that there might be two or three five-loss teams that end up getting there only because they backed in. 
This Michigan State team doesn't deserve to go bowling because virtually every week they've been getting bowled over. Well, one rarity for me, I didn't get bowled over in my picks this past week. In fact, I go a documented 4-1 and one on my selections from a week ago. I think Wisconsin, I think Alabama, and I think Penn State. Three teams that were favored by seven, all three covered. Thank you very much. I also cover in the Texas-Texas Tech game. I didn't pick a winner. All I picked was that the game go over the total. Total was 81. It barely went over. So thank you, Texas. Thank you, Texas Tech, for not knowing how to play defense. You helped me win the game. And the only loss I suffered is because Kansas State does not know how to manage clock. And by the way, Bill Snyder got too cautious with his team up by two scores with about six minutes to go in the game, and he decides to punt the ball rather than go for it on 4th and 1 in Oklahoma State territory. Thanks, Bill. You give the ball back to Oklahoma State, and they score two quick touchdowns on you, and in the end, you got nobody to blame but yourself. So <sighs> they costed me a chance to go perfect. But still, I'm not going to bitch about 4-1. and one. Even though I'm still below 500 for the year, I'm catching up. I'm now at 21 wins and 24 losses, just three games below 500, and plenty of time, plenty of opportunities, plenty of weeks left to get to a winning record. All right, let's go ahead and begin. We're going to begin with the Army at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a big favorite, 13 and a half points. But what does Notre Dame have to play for? Again, Army's trying to get one more win to get to bowl eligibility. And I think Army keeps it competitive. Give me the, the uh, Army team. Give me the uh, cadets plus the 13 and a half. You got Washington at home against USC. For the Trojans, it's been a disappointing year, although, you know, you just never know which USC team you're going to get. Washington's undefeated, and I can't see the Huskies pissing this one away. So give me the Huskies at home minus a seven and a half. This one's a virtual pick, okay? West Virginia against Texas. I know that Charlie Strong's team is playing a little bit better offensively, but West Virginia is not too bad on defense. And I think this is a game, despite it being in Austin, that West Virginia, knowing that they've got to win this one to remain in contention for the Big 12, will get the win. So give me West Virginia plus the two. Stanford against Oregon. You know, by Stanford standards, this is an average year. By Oregon standards, this is an embarrassing Forgetful year. I don't care if this game isn't Eugene. Give me Stanford minus the three. And finally, Auburn's the real thing, ladies and gentlemen. They deserve to be in the top ten. I think they go to Georgia and send a message. I think Auburn kicks the absolute shit out of Georgia. So give me Auburn minus the ten points. And that's my picks for the week. That's my show for Let's Talk College Football. Don't forget my post game of Oklahoma Baylor sometime early Saturday evening. Please check it out. And We'll see you next time.